Biomedical properties is all about cash flow. As we've seen so far in 2023, this is only the first day of 2023. The cash flow will be affected in 2003 because of the escrow payment. If you haven't seen, but you will shortly soon see that uh, escrow payments is going up dramatically from last year to this year. And this will affect cash flow. So real estate investors, potential real estate investors and people who just bought real estate property, be on the lookout, paying ahead. Hey guys, welcome back to the Passive Money Podcast. My name is Alex. That's Kirby over there. Um, Kirby, you've been seeing some of these increases, correct, on some of your properties? Um, I'm I'm a victim, especially here in Florida. So if you have a rental property here in Florida, you be prepared to be surprised. Uh, just depending on where you at in Florida, uh, and I could say it depends on the insurance company, but it don't. It's Florida insurance. Nationwide, I mean, yeah, statewide, they they get hurt and hammered. Then we we feel the pain. It's the same thing with property taxes. Um, if you don't know property taxes, they're usually you know three to five years behind on the valuation of properties. So when they, you know, calculate in two thousand twenty two pricing, you know, they factor in the home values from. 2000, you know, 18, 19, uh, 17, 18, 19, you know, 20. And then that's how they're coming up with the values. So just think the property taxes that we're paying, they haven't even calculated in the next, you know, that hyperbolic years of 2021, 2022. So, or 2020 also, uh, or the end of 2020. And so, yeah. Feeling the pain over there. So that's okay. So that's where the assessment or the assessed value comes in. Is it's three to five years behind? Well, so are you seeing any, as far as your other properties in the other states, are you seeing increases there or just Florida? Well, increases is going to come, but it's nowhere near on the pace of Florida and Florida. I'm seeing on average insurance is uh, increasing 50%. That's the lowest. 50% is the lowest. The highest is one uh, 130. Uh, and then all the rest of them is somewhere in between 130%. So everything else is in, uh, in between of 50 and 130% increase year over year. But yeah, but in states in Georgia and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, all everybody's going to increase. Property tax is going to increase, but it's maybe a hundred dollar increase, you know, less than a percentage point increase. But in Florida, everything is going to bring that. And with that, so so just think if so, let's let's just say somebody just bought a rental property last year, and let's say they was they was getting a cash flow of a hundred bucks. If their escrow payment goes up 300 bucks, the escrow payment goes up 300 bucks this year, then they have to raise the rent. They have to raise the rent on a tenant three to 400 bucks to still cash flow. 2020, you can get away with it. I don't think in 2023, people are going to be able to get around it. So a lot of people are going to go cash flow negative just because of escrow payment. I mean, hopefully they shop it around and stuff like that, but stuff is increasing. So if you bought a property and you're close to break even, and then you get this higher escrow payment and you can't pass that along to the current tenant, now you got another problem because now you have to turn over the unit. And then when you turn over the unit, that's going to cost you more money. And then you got to wait and carry the cost until you get another tenant there at the higher price that you're looking for. So, so do you think there be that's where it's, you think there will be okay. another wave of uh rent increases in Florida? It will have to be rent increases. It have to be rent increases. The question is if the, if the tenants are going to take it or not. Uh, 
But yeah, it, it will be, it has to be rent increases. I mean, the question is, what do you do? Do you, so let's say, let's say you, for instance, if you're in the scenario, like I explained before, do, do you, if your escrow rolls 400, uh, 400 bucks, do you just eat the cost and you pay it and let the tenant live there for free? Or do you raise the rent on the tenant? Which mm -hmm. one would you do? Right, raise the rent, yeah. So if people in that situation, I mean, like case of point for me, the place where the insurance went up a hundred and hundred and thirty some percent. So we can say the number. So twenty, so it was at twenty six hundred a year. So that's what two hundred dollars a month, roughly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, roughly. A little, uh, you know, I'm pulling out my calculator. $2,600 a month divided by 12, that's so around $216 a month. So now they want me to pay $5,600 divided by 12. That was $250. So that's $250, that's $250 per month that cost went up. So if I was a new investor, somebody who just recently bought and I didn't have cash, you know, I'm barely having cash flow. And most people that bought in 2020, 2021, uh, and in most of us, 2021, 2022, the properties don't have heavy cash flow. On them. I mean, unless you know something I don't, it, the cash flow is not that insurmountable where it's, where something can increase 200, 300, $400 and they still making a profit. And that's just insurance. Now you add in property taxes to that also. Property taxes increase, they go up maybe, you know, 70, 60, 70 bucks a month. So that's 300 bucks right there that I just explained in that in, in the scenario that I have, that's 300 bucks a month extra. If I'm in a single family and then let's say I'm bringing in, and let's say I'm managing myself the whole nine. Let's say uh, I'm bringing in $1,000 a month. My mortgage was $700. That's $300, $300 cash flow, right? And we're not going to account for uh, maintenance and all that stuff, but that's $300 in cash flow. And then this happened, property taxes and insurance happened, and then now that's it, you know, an increase of two fifty, three hundred dollars a month. So to keep that same three hundred dollar cash flow in that situation, so now my mortgage is a thousand bucks a month again. It goes to a thousand bucks a month again. The rent still is at a thousand. So for I, so for me to keep that three hundred dollar cash flow, the tenant got to pay thirteen hundred dollars. And the problem problem with that is. I don't think people will have money on the sideline in 2023 to be like, oh, yeah, I can eat a $300 increase. Right. So, that's why escrow payments, I mean, especially in Florida. Other places, is going to be different dynamics, but especially in Florida, with the insurance situation that we have here, it's going to be brutal. Texas is going to be the same way. With the property taxes that they have, property taxes and escrow, that's going to shoot up through the roof. And that's one reason why. I hate buying in uh, Texas because I told you a story when I lived there. My mortgage went from paying nine seventy five, or it was like nine seventy five or a thousand bucks a month. Three years later, I was paying fourteen hundred dollars a month because of escrow payment. Yeah, so that's that's the part of sucks. Well, guys, let us know what you're that's doing. What you're doing. a tenant or an owner? Um, what your plan is for next year or this year? Um, leave a comment down below, hit the like button, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video.